How's everyone doing today? It's your host, Zach Shoes Shoemaker, and today I'm being joined by the newest member of Duke's 2022 recruiting class, which now ranks number one in the country. He just came off of winning a UAA championship with the Illinois Wolves, is now heading to his senior year at Yorkville Christian. He's a top 50 ranked recruit, a four star, and is now a top 75 all time ranked commit in Duke history. And that's Jaden Shoe. You got to walk us through everything going on right now. You're obviously committed. You just came off a busy summer winning the UAA championship. Rankings are going high now. You're top 50 in the country. Just take us through how, all the emotions and how you're feeling right now. You know, I mean, it's definitely a great feeling. And, uh, you know, I had a great summer, played with a great AU team. And, uh, you know, just uh, got a lot of things out of it. Obviously, we won the Under Armour championship and, uh, you know, just – you know, went through all the, you know, offers and the visits and stuff and obviously finally committed. So. And last time you came on here, I think it was a little over a year ago. And at that point, you're just starting to have your name pop up on the back end of some rankings. Could you have seen yourself, though, from that point, a year later, committing to school like Duke, being a tough to recruit, one of the best players in the entire country? Like, could you have seen that happening over the course of next year? Yeah, it was definitely something I, you know, I can definitely see. And, uh, you know, I wrote it down every day, wrote down my goals and, uh, that was, at the, you know, that was at the top of the goal and stuff, you know, that Duke obviously being my dream school. And, uh, you know, I'd always, always just keep working and being like, you know, why can't I be recruited by Duke? So, I, you know, I just kept working and uh, obviously it came through. So That was obviously a long list of great Duke players, but I read that growing up, your dad had you studying a lot of film on one great Duke shooter of all time. That's J.J. Redick. Take us to that a little bit, like just growing up, kind of modeling the game, one of the best Duke players of all time. Just take us to that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, before I even knew it, like really what Duke was, uh, mm-hmm. watching JJ Redick, I really didn't even know who he was. He, he just ended up being the guy on the, on the, you know, on the film. So uh, mm-hmm. we kind of just watch him, and then obviously go out, you know, get out on the court and uh, you know shoot and stuff, and just then just being able to watch such a great shooter and just kind of model it after, you know. So no, it was definitely something a great like uh, thing to watch growing up. So definitely helped. Well, walk us this recruiting process because you did a pretty good job keeping it on the low. Not too many people knew exactly where you were with everything. Obviously, we know now you're going to Duke, but who did this really come down to? Like, was there one or two other schools that you'd say really were heavily in the mix for you? Yeah, I'd definitely say, um, I mean, before Duke came in the picture, you know, um, Iowa was really in the mix, um, Illinois, Michigan State, Florida. I mean, those schools were really in the mix and, uh, you know, I had great relationships with all those coaches before. So, I mean, they were all kind of in the mix as well. That's what's unique because Duke obviously came in and offered you officially July. I'm sure you guys probably talked a little bit before that. But how are they able to make up so much ground? Because some of these schools have been with you for quite a few months, maybe even a year at that point. How is Coach Shire and Duke able to win you over in such a short span? Yeah, I mean, we just – throughout that short span, just kind of spoke, you know, like multiple times a week. And uh, I talked to every one of their assistant coaches during that time on the phone before I even went on the visit. And, uh, you know, like any questions I had, they were great at answering. And, um, you know, they didn't really have anything really to hide. Or, and, uh, you know, they were just great at answering questions and uh, kind of showing what they have. And um, hopped on a couple of Zooms, talked about development. And, um, you know, they're just great answering stuff. And obviously the visit, just was great and uh, it was just a great relationship I have with them so I just felt very comfortable with them. We see that with some guys where you go on your visit and you commit some guys commit on the visit some do a couple days after so how impactful was that visit for you like everything that went down throughout those days you were out there like how big was that for you and how that ultimately win you over at Duke? Yeah so I mean they're definitely a school like I really um, was hoping the visit would go well definitely enjoyed you know my relationship with like the coaches and stuff so like once I got down there, it was, it was like right away, just kind of the field, the, just talking to the coaches. And I mean, it didn't really buy me over right away. Just, you know, kind of just wanted to keep an open mind and, uh, you know, not totally get too emotional about a decision. So kind of just kind of went through, but everything I saw was great. You know, I enjoyed my time down there. And uh, after the visit, just wait, wanted to wait a few days, just pray about it and um, keep thinking about it. And, um, you know, my, my mind just never changed at the time. That's where I wanted to be. So I just wanted to make it official. 
So when did you know Duke was a place? What you said, obviously praying throughout the course of the week. I was talking to family. Like at what point and what day was it that you said, you know, I want to go to Duke. This is where God wants me to be going to. I'm really not sure when it happened, but I mean, it mm-hmm. was definitely, definitely happened something like that. I mean, like, you know, I was praying for a sign or whatever, like, uh, and I kind of spoke to the visit and it just, you know, it was just, um, you know, heavy on my heart. Like, this is where I should be. Um, uh, where this is where I can grow as a human and, uh, as a basketball player. So. Now, when you did go tell coach Shire and the coaching staff that you're going to become a blue devil, you're going to become a member of their team in the following season. What was their reaction? How'd you tell them? Yeah, so I called up Coach Shire. He was the first one I wanted to tell. And, uh, you know, I just kind of called him up and told him I wanted him to be my coach. And, uh, you know, obviously he was really excited about that. Um, obviously, that is, you know, next year will be his first year as a head coach. So he's definitely excited about that. And, um, you know, called up the other coaches uh, and kind of told him, like, you know, I'm going to be a Blue Devil. Kind of went through that. And they are all very excited and, um, you know, just really happy. So it was, uh, you know, all super great calls, so. This was a unique recruiting process for you too, because I'm not sure if there has been a scenario before where the coach is recruiting you and he's not the head coach yet. Because obviously we know it's Coach K's final year, one of not the greatest coach to ever do it. But Coach Shire is the coach in waiting. We know that he's going to be your coach. So how does this whole process go? Like where you're talking to the assistant coach, but technically is the head coach for your team. Like how the whole recruiting process go in terms of Coach Shire, Coach K, like how that work out for you? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something like, Unlike anything other, obviously, a coach in waiting. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I just get to talk to Coach K when I was down on the visit. And um, obviously, he's a head coach this year. And uh, Shire's still the assistant. But uh, it's definitely something like when people ask, I, I got to like explain it to them because, I mean, it's, it's definitely something different. But uh, no, I mean, I definitely believe in Shire and um, his coaching abilities and stuff. And just from talking to him and, uh, you know, being on Zooms with him, talking about development and stuff. So, and I definitely, you know, believe in him. So, I have to imagine when you did talk to Coach K, probably was more kind of talking about what Coach Shire is going to be like. So what was his thoughts like? What was his expectation for Coach Shire? And how did he kind of sell you over a little bit on what Coach Shire would be capable of as a head coach? Yeah, so when I talked to Coach K, I mean, it, was, it wasn't necessarily um, individualized on Shire. It was more about the entire coaching staff. And uh, mm-hmm. it was more just how he enjoyed coaching all those guys. Like something that's really unique about the Duke um, coaching staff is um, – like all those guys played at Duke and mm-hmm. like fairly recent, like, you know, so that's definitely something that I liked whatever, like these guys all played in the same situation um, for the same school. And then Shire obviously being that like same position. So that definitely helped. So. I know you kind of talked a little bit about that in different reports too, that coach Shire, I know some people compare you to him as well. Obviously shooters, a little more off like than the typical shooter, but what's your guys relationship like? Like just talk about you two both on and off the court, like where's your relationship and bond at right now? Yeah, so I mean, just talking to him on the phone and stuff, you know, just just talking about like he's asking like what I do in my workouts and stuff, what I'm doing to improve. And uh, he just, and then he'll just talk about how he can help me and stuff, like improve my game, improve, you know, obviously being a shooter and like just build my confidence. Um, you know, it's one thing they really talk about at Duke, like just, you know, having a lot of confidence, you got to be able to play for, you know, obviously like a great fan base, play for the crazies and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so that's just something, just kind of talking to him and he kind of talks about how he can help me. And then we just talk about things other than basketball. So, you know, just, just having a conversation. So you know, he's definitely a great person to talk to. Now, how big was it for you to go play for a coach that was a former player before? Cause that's something that thinks more and more appealing to guys. If it's rather be someone that played in the NBA, like a Penny Hardwood situation, Jerry Stackhouse, or even someone that just pay, pretty much was in your shoes, like you said, Coach Shire has been a shooter at Duke University, walks pretty much the same exact shoes that you've already, that you've already to go walk through. How big was that for you to be able to play for a guy that kind of knows exactly what it's going to be like for you? Yeah, it's very appealing. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's just something like if I go through struggles and stuff, just someone to go to, like, you know, obviously you probably have struggles as a player, you know, so just someone I can relate to, obviously, um, you know, it's a big advantage and something I just wanted to take advantage of, obviously, so. So what do you think it's going to be like playing for Duke? When you get out there, you play in front of one of not the greatest fan base in the entire sports world. You get to go play for crazies. You go play for all this different scenario. Obviously, there's going to be some pressure coming with that too, I can imagine, to a degree. But just what's it going to be like, do you think, when you get out there and you play your first game? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's something that every kid dreams about, you know, obviously playing for a great fan base and, uh, you know, great school. 
So you know, I'm definitely excited. I feel like I've worked, you know, really hard. I'm going to continue to work very hard, and uh, I'm just going to look forward to and uh, just enjoy it. So let's get into this 2022 recruiting class. He has a now number one ranked in the country. You have Derek, obviously, huge big time top ten commitment. Kyle Filipowski, top ten commitment as well. Just take us through you three. Like, how special can this big three be? Yeah, I mean, I love the other two guys. You know, love watching them as players and stuff. And you know, they're two great guys to talk to as well. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. And uh, you know, they're just great basketball players. So now, did you get to know those guys too much beforehand? Did you start getting to know them once you committed there? Like, where do you stand with both Kyle and Derek relationship wise? And like, when did you first start to get to know them? Yeah, so I mean, I didn't really have a relationship with them before um, Duke mm-hmm. offered, but. Um, it was almost as soon as Duke offered, they were both reaching out um, after they committed and stuff. Mm-hmm. We're reaching out, and uh, you know they're just great about recruiting me and stuff. And obviously, that means something to me. So no, it was um, just kind of started then. So you guys have three guys locked in. I know obviously there's still gonna be a lot more openings available for Duke for that. The transfer portal additions, guys coming in for 2022. But for recruiting class wise, I know Mark Mitchell's in the mix for you guys. Derek Lively, a couple of the guys can be in the mix for Duke. Who are your big targets? Like, who would you want to land to add into this group? Yeah, I mean, uh, J.J. Starling, he's mm-hmm. a great point guard. Um, Mark Mitchell. Um, and then, um, you know, Derek Lively, just three great players that, um, you know, all three of us, like the guys committed, we're just looking to, you know, we're recruiting those guys, kind of telling them we, we want them to be a part of the brotherhood as well. So hopefully we can get all three of them. So let's say you guys do pull on six recruits, six top 50 ranked guys. Obviously, that would probably be the locked in number one, no matter what, by that point. How much would you six be together and what could you guys accomplish in a freshman year? I feel like we'd be a very special group. I mean, um, you know, Coach Shires obviously, you know, got a plan with those guys. And obviously, there's a reason he offered, um, you know, all those guys. So mm-hmm. I feel like it'd be a very special year and, um, you know, definitely a national championship team. So. Now, when you talk about your own personality, what you're going to be bringing to this program, we know you're six foot four, a little bit, maybe six foot five now, even around the 170 weight wise. What can you bring to this program? And just what will you be bringing to Duke, though, when you get out there? You know, just a very confident shooter and uh, just an overall playmaker, some guy who can finish above the rim and uh, shoot from, you know, very far and come off trees and knock down. So, you know, I just say a great shooter with a lot of confidence and just a playmaker. So. Now, this is going to be a long list you could choose from from this group, but if you could look at all the all-time great Duke players, who would be your top five Duke shooters of all time? Top five Duke shooters. I definitely uh, I definitely got to put J.J. Redick up there. Mm-hmm. Um, Luke Kennard, John Shire. Um, I, I like Gary Trent Jr. when he was there, and then um, got to go with Grayson Allen. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's just a lot of great – Got a lot of great guys. These are just some of the guys you know I enjoyed watching. But uh, I mean, you could even put like Seth Curry in there. He had a great time there. Um, mm-hmm. Just a lot. That's, that's the thing about Duke. There's so many that came through there, and um, so many special players. So now, obviously, look at that list. Anyone would want the name to be a part of that list someday. So, what will it take for you to possibly put your name on that list, where people start saying, or future recruits in maybe five, six, seven years from now say? I want to be like Jaden. He's a top five, top 10 all-time shooter, maybe even player of all time at Duke. Like what will it take for you to possibly reach that level of play and kind of put your name alongside those other guys? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you just obviously just got to do what I got to do and, um, you know, shoot the ball really well. And uh, you know, I would just say focus on winning. Just kind of mm-hmm. like right now, I'm just going to focus on getting better every single day and uh, whatever happens, happens during my career and stuff. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's the best, but um that's definitely a dream, you know, to have kids come through and want to go to Duke because I went there. So it's definitely a dream. Absolutely. We'll get back into Duke a little bit to wrap this up, but I want fans to get to know you a little bit better. You off the court, you throughout your high school career so far. So we head back. You're obviously from Illinois, where you've grown up playing at now. What's it been like just growing up out there? Oh, it's great. I mean, it's it's definitely a different mix of um, things. So like, you got a lot of great basketball players in Chicago, and then. Um, I mean, I'm from like the suburbs, about an hour southwest of uh, Chicago. So, mm-hmm. got a little bit of like the mix. You got a little, you know, got farm fields out of here, mm-hmm. and then um, got the city. So it's it's a little, you know, bit of uh, both worlds. But um, no, it's definitely it's definitely an interesting thing. A little cold and where I'm from, you know. But uh, no, it's definitely great being out here. You know, enjoy the people. So, 
You've grown up in a family of athletes. Your dad played basketball. You also have brothers that have all played basketball throughout at least high school. Just what's it been like growing up in a family where you get to be surrounded around the game of basketball? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a blessing. I, you know, I uh, you know, thank God every day for my all three older brothers. And, uh, you know, they've been a huge blessing growing up, just, you know, obviously athletically and um, for a lot of other things. But, um, you know, it's been great. You know, they've always been wanting to teach me, wanting to help me. I mean, obviously they're little brothers, so they want to like help me be my the best I can be. And uh, mm-hmm. it's been a great help growing up. I'm not sure how far apart each one of you guys are. I know you got to play your freshman year with one of your brothers, but when did you first start getting to compete with them? Or has that time even come yet where you can go play them on King of the Core one-on-one and start beating some of them? Yeah, about the time I started beating them, I mean, probably about uh, freshman, sophomore year, you know, like, um, you know, even then, like when I was getting offers and stuff, they're very good players too. Like, you know, the one six eight, the one six six, six four, and they're all great athletes. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, and they all they all compete. That's the one thing. So, you know, they all they all take um, each other's heads off. So uh, it's definitely it's definitely been great to just compete against them and just have guys you know go against Lang, um, play against. So just growing up playing against good players. So when you think of all the memories you guys created together growing up, which one comes to mind first? I would just say, I mean, we got a court outside and uh, like just all of us going out there and playing two on two um, and. You know, just a lot of a lot of battles out there. So, absolutely. Well, you also just made a post a few minutes ago, right before we got on here, about your new brand. We know NIL is in effect now. Guys can start making money off the name, image, and likeness. And you just released it. Shooter Brands now coming out. You put your first shirt out now. Take us a little bit through that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's definitely something with um, NLI. Just want to take advantage of and uh, you know, just get a t-shirt out there and um, be able to take the proceeds, give back to the community, and. Um, just put those proceeds towards something good. And um, mm-hmm. so I just want to take advantage of it, obviously make um, just some some great merch and something someone would wear. So you know, just trying to take advantage of the name of your likeness. So. That's something I want to expand it on too, because obviously with this coming in effect, guys can start making money and some place, especially going to school like Duke, will bring a lot more money in for just the branding of that type of level of school. But like you even mentioned, you just said right now to like, you want to give back a lot of it. And that might not be the mindset of too many guys, which nothing against that, but what's really led you to want to give back? What's led you to want to be a bigger impact in your community as opposed to just bringing in different stuff for you and even your family? Yeah. I mean, it's just the way I've been raised. I've been raised in Christian schools and obviously just, you know, obviously give back and, um, you know, just be like Christ and stuff. And, and uh, that's just been a huge um, kind of, just kind of want to follow that and kind of just, you know, do something good for the community. And um, yeah, so definitely just, I would have to just point that back to my faith and stuff. No doubt. Well, you also just came off winning a championship now with Illinois Wolves, UAA championship. And we know that the past year, you guys didn't get a full AU season, if any. Now you get back on that court though. You get a team with Braden, go through a great run, come away with championship. As well as this whole experience playing on the AU circuit for your final year. It was a great experience. Um, it was definitely something interesting to the 16U not being able to play and then uh, just going right into it for 17U. Mm-hmm. Playing a full season, um, obviously just very blessed to have a full season with COVID still being around. So just very thankful for that. And, uh, you know, I just love playing with those guys, very unselfish players. And, you know, they just everyone plays hard. We all play for each other. And, uh, you know, that's definitely accounted for a lot of our success. So. It's not easy to get into that point. There's tons of great teams in the UAA. You're talking about many of the top ranked players in the country too. How are you guys able to come away with that? Because pretty much the win or go home scenario for the most part, all of that tournament, you guys come away as champions. Take us to that weekend. How do you guys ultimately prevailed as champions of the UAA 17? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we had a great record going into that the championship weekend. And uh mm-hmm. We were just kind of thinking, like, this is our last AAU tournament. I mean, we love playing with each other. Like, we didn't want it to end. So, like, we could have played, <laughs> we could have played another tournament right after that. So, it was, it was definitely, um, that definitely helps. So, and, you know, we know we had a great AAU coach, Mike Mullen. So, just kind of, we'd all play for each other and we'd all listen to our coach and just helped us all be on the same page and play with confidence. And then, you know, that helped us win a championship. So, is it crazy trying to think of that now? Like officially your AU season, your career is over for that now. Like you've gone through many years of your life now playing on different AU circuits and stuff. Like how crazy is it now looking back and saying, you know, my AU career is over now? It's definitely crazy. I mean, I, 
I, I thought about it the, like I don't really have time to think about it like after because mm-hmm. right after we won that tournament and got on a flight and went to the Orlando top 100 but um mm-hmm. I haven't really thought about that but like, <laughs> it was definitely a great experience I mean I played for a great AAU program in the Illinois Wolves and um but uh yeah just learned a lot and just kind of going to look forward to a new chapter so I'm sure winning championships is probably your favorite, if not one of them. But what would you say besides that is your favorite AAU memory you've had? I would just say how tough the practices were. I mean, with the Wolves, we go three-hour practices, some, you know, 13-hour weekend sometimes. Um, just some crazy stuff and just, like, just grinding with the guys. I mean, just kind of – we got to go through defensive slides. you got five of them to do that. So we're all super tired coming back to the bench and just, just being, you know, kind of being in the trenches with the guys and – uh just kind of that bond that's built, like, you know, the guys going through um, adversity and tough times. So. Now, there's a lot of great players on that team. One other guy that really stands out, Brian Huff, another top 100 crew. What was it like just growing that bond with him, becoming that dynamic duo and just playing alongside him? Yeah, you know, he was a great player to play with. Um, he's a very smart, high IQ player and um, he's 6'10", but he handles like a guard. So mm-hmm. just being able to play with him and like, you know, obviously we have a lot of things like, he hit me on back doors, come off handoffs. And um, so I would definitely say a lot of my success, you know, just kind of, you know, he helped. So just, um, just be able to play off him. He's a great player. And then we had, you know, some other great players, great point guard, Jalen Quinn, some cool guys, um, Al Choice, Tatum Pierce, and just a lot of other great guys that contributed. But, um, you know, just kind of, you know, just love all those guys, great players. So. Obviously we don't know if Brandon will even be, is really even being recruited much by Duke, but. Whatever program does land him, I know he's got many of the high major offers he's looking at right now. What will the program be getting in Braden whenever he decides to commit to whichever program he goes to? Yeah, I mean, first off, they're going to get they're getting a great kid, very smart. Um, you know, he's definitely a great shooter for his size and, uh, you know, very versatile. He moves very well and, uh, you know, can handle like a guard. So, I mean, they're going to get a great player and a great person. Did you guys ever talk about going somewhere for college? Obviously, you're committed now, but any point where you guys like talking about, hey, let's go on a visit here together, possibly ever being recruited by the same schools, even for high school, different team ups? Like, did you guys ever talk about that? I wish we teamed up for high school, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we talk recruiting a lot and kind of just see where each other are at. But I mean, obviously, just understanding we're going to go to the places that's best for us um, and, our, you know, it fits our style. But, uh, you know, we definitely talk about recruiting a lot and, um, you know, kind of help each other out. I think that we were talking about a few visits, like, hey, if you're going, checking out this school, you're checking out this school, maybe let's go the same weekend. But, um, yeah, no, he's definitely someone, someone to, like, look to for any recruiting stuff. So, Absolutely. Let's get into your high school career. You spent it all at one school, your Phil Christian. Walk us to that decision because a lot of guys go to different schools throughout their high school career. You stayed loyal. You've built a great legacy for yourself now. Take us to them just what it's been like building a legacy at Yorko Christian. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people question this decision at first, going to a school of uh, 50 kids at that time. And, uh, but I just, I just want to play with my older brother. I mean, um, there were some great players there. We had a great year that year, my freshman year. We won a, you know, we won a sectional. We made it to the Elite Eight for our class. And, uh, you know, just be able to great, develop great memories there. And, uh, you know, my dad, we were kind of talking with him on the decision. He's like, you know, you go out there and you play at like other great people, like great players are going to follow. So, I mean, that's what happened. So played freshman year, had a good year. And I mean, other good players, you know, continue to follow, wanted to play with me and um, kind of just built off that. And now, I mean, the school's up to, I think, like 170, 180. And, um, you know, we're looking to have another great year this year. And that is a unique approach. I think it's great for a lot of guys that do take prep routes and go that route. Obviously helps a lot of guys too, but we see a very select group of guys that are still top 100, top 50 now, even in your case, stay at one school, build a legacy for four years, kind of create something special at the local high school. So what's it just been like looking back at that? Like there's deciding to stay here, building this legacy. How much more impactful and important is that for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely something like special. And, um, you know, I got a special place in my heart for you, for Christian. It's been a, it's been a great opportunity to go there. Great school. Um, you know, I've enjoyed playing for the, my coaches and stuff. So, you know, it's something very special to me. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I had, you know, other opportunities that I thought about, but I'm, I'm very thankful that I, you know, stay loyal and, um, and it just continued to grow at the school. And it's, it's got everything I need to succeed. You know, it's great facilities and, um, you know, I'm just very thankful that 
I'm here and I'm just kind of looking forward to another year because, you know, because I love there. So. And I know you kind of brought up a little bit, but I have to imagine a lot of the top ranked prep schools were talking to you, reaching out at different points throughout your career. Did you ever consider that? Like, did you ever look at that? Have any interest in going somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, so, like, obviously, everything being so new, just going through the recruiting process and uh, just not really knowing, like, is, is that something I need to uh, get, you know, higher looks, get blue bloods looking at me? Um, mm-hmm. Like, is that something I need? So we definitely looked into it. And, um, but realizing, I mean, you don't need it. So mm-hmm. <laughs> you can stay right where you are and um, just play great for AU. And, um, yeah, stay right where you are. And the schools will come want to play you. So it's been, uh, it's been great there, though. Let's hop into each one of those years a little bit. Your freshman season, like you said, you got to play the Cole and your older brother for a little bit. Walk us that freshman season is getting to play with your brother for the first time in a high school level. And you also had a great season, like you said, as a team. So what was that freshman year like? Yeah, I mean, not, like not too many people knew of me. And uh, so just be able to come out and uh, just kind of reports would always kind of leave me open freshman year and uh, at the beginning of the year. And um you know, my older brother's my point guard, so he'd get it to me. He'd have games where it's 14 assists, and I'd have, you know, give him eight of them. So he, he would love playing with me. I'd give him his assists, and, you know, and just have someone to always watch my back. And um, definitely something needed, you know, obviously being super young, not necessarily having the body that can take the impact for, like, you know, playing varsity, but just having, some, you know, people that look out for me definitely helped. So that was a, it was a great freshman year, obviously, playing with my older brother. So if someone would have told you before you played your freshman season that you're going to end your high school career as one of the top players in the country committed to Duke, could you have seen that in your future at that point in time? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something I dreamed about, but just obviously dreams coming true, like you never know. But uh, I would definitely say like <laughs> back then I had a lot of confidence that that was definitely going to happen. So. <laughs> So at what point would you say it all kind of came together for you? Like you started saying my confidence kind of matched in with my production as well. Like I truly feel like every time I step on that court, no matter it be UAA, you know, no matter it be any level of basketball, high school, circuit, like whatever it is, I'm going to be one of the top players. Like when do you think that all kind of came together for you? It's definitely been something I've grown up with and uh, I just have a great support system, great trainers. Um, um, yeah. So I just, I just feel like if I keep, you know, staying humble and putting in work every day, like, you know, my game will speak for itself. And obviously I've just stayed true to that. Never, you know, never take any days off, whatever, just keep getting in the gym and, um, you know, just kind of saying, just getting better at my craft. And uh, that's just kind of helped propel. So, I mean, just kind of sticking with it. And obviously a lot of great things have come out of it. The sophomore season has went 24 and 11. You have a big jump as well. You go to 22 points a game, nine rebounds, three assists, two steals, a block per game. What was that sophomore year like for you? Yeah, so, I mean, just over the summer, I just uh, got in the weight room, got my body better. Um, mm-hmm. That was a big jump athletically. Um, yeah, just big jump athletically. So, just kind of enhanced my game, took it to another level, and went from just being a good player to, um, you know, a, a better player at that time. Um, and so, the game just got a lot easier than just being able to take control of the game and, um yeah, so just, I just put in a lot of work on my body and it just kind of came through and uh, just kind of took a bigger jump then. And you kind of brought up your athleticism aspect and that's not something that we see too common for a lot of great shooters. A lot of guys typically are just great shooters, but you have that athleticism in your game as well where you may not be the most athletic guy in the world, but you've done, done a few different guys before. You're pretty athletic, especially for a shooting guard. How have you learned to incorporate that into your game and now show that you can be one of the more athletic shooting guards in the country? Yeah, it's definitely something I've always worked on. So my parents are uh, both strength trainers. My oldest brother's a you know, strength trainer. And um, you know, I just work out with them. We do different agility stuff. And uh, I feel like I've always been athletic. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> There's been a lot of people who feel like, you're not the most athletic person. But, like, they obviously haven't seen film on me. But uh, I, I don't know where that came through, that I don't look like I'm athletic. So I don't know. I don't know where that came through. I, think, I, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm a very athletic person. I can feel like I can do any dunk possible. Uh, you know, I dunk in games all the time. So I don't know where I can just got the label shooter, but uh, it's definitely been funny. So. so what would you say is your favorite dunk you've had in a game so far? I've had a, had a windmill one time and, um, you know, I love doing reverse cockbacks and stuff like double pumps, mm-hmm. but I would definitely say my favorite is just dunking on people. So. <laughs> just catching a few people. Uh, that's definitely the best. Like, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> nothing's better than dunking on someone. 
Absolutely. Well, you're heading to your junior season now, and that obviously was up and down with COVID stuff, but you still got quite a few games in, more than some people got. You averaged 26 a game, eight rebounds, four assists, four steals, and a block per game. Just what was that kind of shortened COVID-type season for your junior year? Yeah, it was a shortened season. Didn't play as many games. We played, um, I believe I played in 11 or – yeah, I think it was 11 games. I was injured for the last one with an ankle injury, but uh, – it was a little different. I played point guard that year, so just kind of being able to handle the ball, get other guys the ball, and um, yeah, it's just a, it was just an interesting year. But you know, obviously, just continue to get better at my game, um, try to be an overall player, and uh, you know, just feel like I made another huge jump. Just kept, you know, just stayed in the gym and got better, and just obviously it came through. We know you're well known for one game, and it's going to be probably the record for quite some time. That 17 threes in a game, 51 points total that game. And we talked about that last time you came on here, but do you think there's a chance you could possibly break that record this upcoming season? I'm going to aim to break it, so <laughs> hopefully I do. So, so what's your biggest goals now? You have one final year of high school basketball. You're committed, so that's off your plate. You don't have to worry about recruiting anymore. Just one season, you get to enjoy it. What do you want to get done and accomplish throughout the next four, five, six months now? Yeah, I just want to win a state championship. Uh, you know, it's been a big thing. I obviously didn't get a chance to um, win one last year, obviously with no state series. Mm-hmm. So just kind of want to win a state championship and uh, cap off my you know senior year on a high note. And then, um, yeah, just basically just be the best player I can be. And, you know, whatever awards come with that, you know, it'd be great if I can get it. But, you know, just kind of focus on the state championship. So you probably have a little less than a year now to get on campus, probably more like nine-ish months to get out there. Are there anything you want to improve on or get better at, rather be adding muscle to your game, improve on some scales? Like, what do you want to get better at over the next few months before you get on campus for Duke? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, definitely, obviously, there's a big jump in um, just your body and stuff. I got to put on some weight, got to add some muscle, just uh, take the kind of the pounding that comes with the college game and – so just going to continue to get in the weight room and improve my body and then just um, improve my ball handling, my passing, and um, my defense. So just kind of then just continue to study the game and, uh, yeah, just get be a smarter player. Now, I know some guys take more pride in the numbers than others do, but is there a certain number that you want to have when you're out there for Duke? I wanted number two, but uh, Jalen Blake says it right now, so um, – I don't know, kind of just got to see who, uh, you know, who, like, leaves after this year and um, maybe snatch a zero through five jersey. But, um, you know, if not, 14, I played in before my freshman year. So, I might, you know, I had no problem playing in 14, so. Absolutely, man. Well, something else that's big about you, we kind of talked about a few times. You stayed local throughout your entire career. You still became a top-ranked prospect. And, a lot of guys think that you have to go to a big prep school. A lot of guys think you have to take different routes to get to that point. So what's your advice to different guys? Like guys growing up, rather be where you're from in Illinois or any other small area in the country, like how do you do it? How do you become a top-ranked guy, a guy that can go to a school like Duke while not going through all the publicity, while not going to all big schools? Like what's your advice to this type of kids? Yeah, I mean, everyone's situation is different. Obviously, in my situation, I had all the tools to, you know, to obviously – get better and uh, be able to perform and, uh, you know, get noticed. But I mean, I would just say everyone's situation is different, but mm-hmm. you know, it's in today's day, day and age, there's, I mean, there's a lot of different things. Uh, there's AU programs everywhere. There's, I mean, different gyms you can go to different trainers. So I feel like the tools are all there for anyone who really wants to be great. So, you know, you just got to put in the time and uh, there's really no secret to success. You just got to stay consistent and um, put in the time. So, also, just getting represent Illinois. Obviously, he said Chicago is well known for having a lot of talent, but even the outskirts, there's a lot of other great talents come from there historically and right now. So, what does it mean for you to be able to represent a place like Illinois, a place that has a basketball history that they do? Like, what kind of comes with representing a place like that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, just Michael Jordan playing in Chicago, um, you know, and uh, like every, all the kids looked up to that. And I feel like we've had a lot of great players come through. I, Anthony Davis, Derek Rose. Um, yeah, we've just had a lot of great players come through. A lot of players in the NBA are from Illinois. And, um, you know, there's a reason for it. There's a lot of, a lot of tools at, to get to the next level. And um, Chicago, obviously, just a lot of great basketball players there. And, um, just, you know, there's a lot of great AU programs, too. So, I mean, uh, just a lot of tools. And uh, I definitely take a lot of pride in being from Illinois and, um, you know, being a hooper from here. So, 
No doubt, man. Well, something I was like wrapping up is talking about building a legacy for yourself. And you know your final chapter now, your next chapter at least would be at Duke. So when you do leave Duke, what do you kind of remember for what you achieved both on and off the court there? Yeah, I mean, on and off the court, that's one, that's another big thing. Um, she's in Duke. Duke's just a very successful school um, academically and obviously, you know, for basketball. So, mm-hmm. you know, every kid's there for a reason. A lot of, you know, Victorians get there. Um, so there's a lot of successful people too. So I just want to be remembered for being, um, you know, just being a hard worker, um, a winner on and off the court, just doing well in the classroom and then on the court. So, you know, just being a hard worker and a winner. So, you kind of talked about your faith a little bit earlier on, but, Kind of going a little bit deeper into that. How would you say God's helped get you to the point you're at today? Yeah, I mean, just putting my trust in God and, um, you know, just what he has to say. And, uh, you know, if I have any questions, just go to prayer and, um, you know, kind of just put, you know, put that on, you know, put that on God and stuff. And uh, it's definitely been, I mean, obviously it's been phenomenal help. Uh, just having someone like that, you know, just have, you know, be a rock, be my rock and stuff and, uh, you know, my foundation. But, um it's definitely been a great tribute to my success and obviously, you know, all glory to God for all, you know, anything that's come with it. So. When would you say kind of form that personal bond? Like I know growing up in a Christian household just kind of brought on upon you at a younger age, but was there a certain time you remember back that you kind of saw God really showing up in your life and really form that own one-on-one relationship with him? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously growing up um, with a, in a Christian household, uh, I, Growing up, it kind of felt like my family's faith, my parents' faith. Like, okay, we go to church because my parents would go to church. I mean, it's very like I always think, all right, this is boring. Like, like obviously, I knew a lot of the stories, but um, I don't have to say like eighth grade freshman year kind of took the faith as my own and um, started to take it more serious and um, yeah, just kind of take it as my own. So, absolutely, man. Well, when you look at getting a bigger, bigger platform now, especially by going to a school like Duke. A lot more people start following you. You have a lot bigger platform to spread as light. So how do you look to be like, how do you look to be able to be a light for God while you get to the next level at Duke and possibly even a pro career, whether it be NBA overseas? Like how do you plan to be able to continue to spread God's word and be a light to the world? Yeah. So I mean, it's definitely a great platform to spread it too. Um, you know, to spread God's word. So, I mean, just any success that comes with it, obviously just give all glory to God. And, um, you know, with that, obviously having that platform, just being able to, share my faith and uh, you know hopefully someone else finds it you know finds that that's what they need too so um yeah just being able to share my faith on a bigger platform so absolutely man well a final thing for you give duke fans your three biggest goals you have set for your duke career three biggest goals for my career i'm definitely saying national championship that's definitely mm-hmm. up there and um yeah um obviously just you know win the acc um, tournament and um, you know just just get better every day with those guys and um yeah it's just so I mean obviously just I just want to win you know win national championship win they win as much as I can and then um yeah you know, I'm just looking forward to it so absolutely man congratulations on the big commit once again man I'm excited to see what got you on next screen appreciate you taking time to come on today yeah, yeah thank you Dan I definitely appreciate you having me on here of course man you know you're always welcome on man God bless All right, yeah, God bless you too.